I just want to say, Pastor Jeremy, you did a fantastic job tonight. Yeah. No matter what anybody says about you, you did a wonderful job. And Tim, we would love to have you back whenever you are ready. <laughs> Thank you. You know, I'm just going to go down now. That's how I feel. <laughs> I asked, Brother, I asked Brother Doro if he would preach for us this evening. Uh, so he already gave you a little bit of uh, what he's going to preach on tonight. So, Brother, you come and preach on the kingdom to us tonight. And we are looking forward to that this evening. Thank you for doing this. Thank you, Brother. Well, good news. Pastor Fisher has low expectations tonight. Yeah. <laughs> I expect to hear a... Brother, you did a fantastic job preaching tonight after this is done. No, that, was, that was really good. I think I pushed a button. No. I um, was, Paul, we were a little confused on what we were supposed to sing and getting that, uh, whichever one. And then I just, I just want to follow Brother Dennis over there. He's got them all memorized. So it doesn't, he doesn't, does a great job with that. Well, good evening to you. And so glad to be here tonight. I'm glad you're here tonight. Glad you showed up and um, want to get talking about some things tonight. We're going to be talking about the kingdom of God. But before we do that, the kingdom of heaven, actually, uh, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 13. So if you wanted to get started turning there, I just want to give a, a little start here about, about where this message came from and um, try to give maybe, hopefully, I'm hoping this will be an encouragement to you tonight. Um, Pastor Fisher called me this week and, and just asked me if, if um, I would be willing to speak tonight, and um, absolutely I was, and I didn't really have a message ready at all. I didn't even really have an idea for a message, but something I started doing this year in my daily Bible study um, is, has really been helping me out uh, in my in my time with the Lord and in the Word, I, I had spent really several years uh, making sure that I read the Bible through in the year, and uh, that takes, as you know, about three chapters a day or so, and, and I, did, I did get that taken care of. But this year, uh, I, I think the Lord just laid on my heart that I need to get a little deeper instead of, instead of making sure that I'm um, covering the Bible in the year. Um, then what I did is I changed it around a little bit, and I started reading just one chapter a day. Sometimes I read more than that, but I focus in on one chapter a day. And, and I don't even, I go through a book at a time, but I don't know even which book I'm going to do next. Right now, I'm in the book of Matthew. Um, I purchased a Bible this year, a new Bible. Uh, I've always used the study Bible, uh, King James study Bible. I, I like I, the Nelson study Bible. Um, I, I think they do a pretty good job with that. But the Bible I purchased this year is a note taker's Bible. Um, got it from the KJV store uh, online, and it's really nice too. I mean, it's like lambskin on here. It's very, very beautiful. Got a lot of room for me to write notes in the margins in here. But the thing is, it doesn't have any any references at all in it. It just has chapter and verse, and it has the little paragraphs in there. And I struggled with that at the beginning because I, I'm used to, when there's a word that I, I don't understand or I don't normally use, I'm used to looking at my study Bible and seeing what that word is and, and just you know going over and looking in the margins or looking underneath. If I don't understand something, I'm used to looking at the bottom and seeing what the commentators say. Um, and I struggled at the beginning, but it really has helped me out. And and if you use the study Bible, that's just wonderful, great. Whatever's working for you, I'm just trying to give you a little bit of, of how the Lord's working in my life. It's helped me out because it's, it's forcing me to focus on the Word of God and, and let the Lord just talk to me through it and, and go around the area the, uh, in the, the surrounding scriptures and really trying to study to show myself approved unto God. And that, is, that has just been helping me tremendously. Another thing that's been helping me is um, I make sure that I, I, I force myself on each page to write at least one note and explain that. And I find that as I'm reading a lot of these things that are familiar to me, once I start to write my notes, then things start to open up to me. And it's, it's just a matter of, I, I believe it's a matter of me meditating on the word and thinking about it. And it, it really has been a blessing in my life. So I would encourage you, even if you don't have a note taker's Bible, to get a little journal if you don't do that already and force yourself to write something down each day. 
what the Lord has spoken to you. And another thing is, I, I have a brother in Christ that I, um, I text every day what, I, what the Lord had spoken to me about. And um, I, I don't know that it really helps him, but it helps me. Because again, I'm, I'm writing information down. I'm meditating on it while I'm doing that. And then I'm, I'm uh, making a text and sending that off. And it really makes it a lot more concrete in, in my, um, my mind and in my life too. And so I would encourage you to, to do something like that. It's been really helpful t- for me. Um, I would even encourage, you know, maybe the men in the church, if you do texting, then maybe we can even do a group thing, you know, where, where we sit just, here's what the Lord shared with me today. And, and ladies, you could do that too. And so um, if you want to do that, then you just let me know and we will get going on that. Matthew chapter 13. As I was reading through that, I probably should open to it, but as I was reading through this on Thursday, this was my reading, and I noticed that over and over again, Jesus speaking to his disciples, he had given a couple parables in here, and then over and over again, he kept talking about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven. This is what the kingdom of heaven is like. This is, and and so I, I I took those words and I thought, I need to know more about the kingdom of heaven. And so that's what I want to talk about tonight. These are my thoughts and and what the Lord has, um, I believe, revealed to me in my study. And uh, that's where I want to start tonight. I want to start, though, with prayer. Let's pray and then we'll get right into this. Our dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much that there is a kingdom of heaven. There's a kingdom of God. Lord, I thank you that for your word, in your word, you have revealed so many things to us, Lord. And I thank you for the, the wisdom and, and the just blessing that we can get out of every word that you've given us. Lord, you have not left us to, to just figure out things on our own. Lord, we, we would not be able to do it. But Lord, you've given us your word. You've given us your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Lord, tonight that what we go through about the kingdom of heaven would just be an encouragement in each and every one of our lives, Lord. Lord, thank you for blessing me as I studied this. Lord, I pray that it could be a blessing to all those who are listening tonight, whether in this church or online. And we'll just give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's start out in Matthew chapter 13. I'm going to start in verse 44. And we are going to pretty much stay in Matthew chapter 13 most of the evening. Uh, I do have one other book that we will be going to, but we're going to jump all around Matthew chapter 13. Starting in verse 44, Jesus speaking, it says, Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind, which, when it was full, they drew to the shore to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away." So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just and shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Well, to start out, I wanted to get some information about what a kingdom is. So um, uh, on, here's a, another little bit of information that maybe will help you out. Um, I looked it up in the dictionary, and I looked it up in the Webster's 1828 dictionary, which, by the way, if you have a smartphone, you could get an app for that for free. And that has a lot of words, a lot of the words in our King James Bible are in there. And in fact, a lot of it was based on uh, much of the words from the King James Bible. But uh, I wanted to make sure that I got to one that, you know, we're not going to change the definition all the time with, with whatever the culture is. So Webster 1828, the word kingdom. There were several 
several descriptions in there. One of them said the territory or country subject to a king. So obviously when we have a kingdom, then we should have a king. And so this is talking about the land that this would be the kingdom. Another uh, definition said the inhabitants or population subject to a king, which I thought was interesting that the, the kingdom could be the people not just the area, but the people. And in fact, in the Webster's 1828 dictionary, along with other definitions, there was another one. It said, in scripture, the government or universal dominion of God. This is the kingdom. God is dominant, and he is dominant over all, and we are in his kingdom. So I have four points, honey, about the kingdom four points, and you can tell that I did not go to Bible school because I think they teach you three points and, and, a, and a joke. Okay, so four points. Point number one. Point number one is the kingdom is coming. The kingdom is coming. There is coming a time where there will be a physical kingdom of God in a kingdom of heaven right here on this earth. They, this king will be known to all people. There will be no doubt who the king is. There will be no denying who the king is. Back in Matthew chapter 13, let's jump back to verse 36. So in Matthew 13, starting at verse 36, it says, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto, the, unto us the parable of the tares of the field. So you know this parable. The parable was that uh, they planted the wheat in the field, and then, then an enemy came in at night and put the, the weeds or the tares in there also. And then they said, should we go out and, and pluck them up? And, and the, the, um, the owner of the land said, no, don't do that because you might pluck up the wheat also. So verse 37, this is Jesus explaining, he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the seed is the son of man. The field is the wor world, the, s the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore ta the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Before I read verse 43, which is where I'm going to stop in this little section right here, uh, this may sound to some of us like the rapture when you say there, there'll be a taking away. But this is not the rapture. This is at the end of the world, and notice who's being taken away. It's not the believers. It's the wicked that are being taken away, taken away to judgment. This is the end of this world as we know it, and the beginning of the kingdom on this world. Verse 43, I think if this doesn't excite you, I don't know what it will. Verse 43, then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun, in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Well, who are the righteous? Who, are, who is this that, that he's talking about here? This is us. This is believers. These are the ones that, that were, were taken into the barn. There were the, the tares were taken and put in the furnace. And, and the wheat was gathered into the barn. And it says that we in the kingdom, we're not worthy of this. But we in the kingdom, it says, the righteous shall shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their, of their father. What a blessing that's going to be. Our God is such a loving God. We have a promise that we're going to shine in the kingdom. We shouldn't be shining in the kingdom. It, it's, it should be our Lord and Savior, and it will be. It will be our Lord and Savior, but he's going to allow us to shine too. What a blessing that is. This is the one time. Stay in Matthew chapter 13. Keep your finger there. But we're going to flip all the way back to Revelation chapter 19. And just as we're thinking about this end of the world coming and thinking about what is going to happen in this time, 
I, Revelation chapter 19, uh, this is kind of lengthy here that I'm going to read starting at verse 11 all the way through the end of the chapter. And of course, there's much more that I could read when we're talking about the end of this world and the end of this world systems and talking about the, the beginning of the kingdom here on earth. But let's look at verse 11. It says, John saying, I, and I saw heaven open and behold, a white horse and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Just as a pause right there. Just to think about his vesture being dipped in blood. We think of Jesus many times. We, we think of him as meek, and, and he, was. he was. He had strength under control. But friends, at this time, when he comes back, he will be judging, and he will take care of sin on the earth. He took care of, he wiped out the, the, the um, punishment for sin the first time. This time he will be punishing the wicked. Verse 14, and the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Okay, pausing just a second again right there. Because I, I believe that's us that are on those white horses right there. We, are, we have been the bride of Christ. The church has been taken up, has been raptured, has been married to the lamb. And now we are clothed in that fine linen, white and clean. And we're coming back with Christ on those white horses. We're not going to do the battling. We don't need to. Christ is going to take care of it all himself. But we're coming back. Verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And, and, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. There it is again. It, I just can't get away from when I start to study something with the king. With the, even even the, the psalm that I read this morning, um, as I read that psalm and talking about our God and our king and what a great blessing that is. Verse 17, and I saw an angel standing in the sun and he crowd with, cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that, were, that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of, of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army, honestly probably thinking that they can make war against the king of kings. Verse 19, and I saw the beast and the kings of the earth. Oop, I just read that. Verse 20, and the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire, burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and, the fowl, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Our God will be victorious, no doubt about it. You know, there are some people uh, that would think that we need to build God's kingdom here, that that is our job to do that. It is not our job to do that. We have a job. We are here to serve the Lord. We have a great commission that we are to follow. We are to preach his name. We are to live for him. But we're not to build his kingdom here. In fact, this world will get worse and worse. He will take care of building his kingdom. What a blessing that is. The kingdom is coming. Next point. The kingdom is here. The present kingdom. We are part of God's present kingdom. Back into Matthew again, Matthew chapter 13. 
and back to verse 10. Verses 10 through 12 say this. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away, even that he hath. You know, the, the beauty of of just focusing in on one chapter a day is that I can, I can take a look at some of these and I can start to ask the question, why did these disciples get, get this? It says, it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So why did they get that? Was it, was it something that, that God just says, you're going to know, you're going to know, you're going to know, you're going to know, but you're not, and you're not? Was it that, that they had something special? Well, I think we can find some answers to that if we keep reading in verse 13. Verse 13 says, Therefore speak I, unto, un, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing see not. And hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. I'm going to keep reading here up until through verse 17. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed." lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For verily I say unto you that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which ye see and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear and have not heard them. The answer to our question, I believe from scripture, Jesus just answered, why did these people, why was it for them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God? Because they had their eyes open. They were looking. They had their ears open. They were listening. They knew as being children of the king, they knew they wanted to serve the king. They wanted to know what the king wanted for them. They realized that they were not the ones in charge, but the king was in charge, and they were to follow orders. And so if we want to be, if we want to understand the mysteries and the, the things that are unknown to many people, well, then we got to want to know our king. We have to spend time with our king. We have to desire to serve our king. We have to do whatever, we, whatever our king tells us to do, and we gotta be willing to change our lives. And the king, God will open up our eyes to more and more things. He will, he will give us more and more light. Now, verse 17, where it says that many prophets and righteous men have desired to see those things which, which ye see, and have not seen them, and to hear those things which ye hear, and have not heard them. I am sure, as the, as the prophets looked forward to the coming Messiah, and they, they knew that the, all these wonderful things would be done, I'm sure that they longed to, to be in these days that the disciples lived in, where they were daily with the Messiah. They were walking with him. They were being taught by him. They were, they were witnesses to to uh, blind people having their sight brought back. Witnesses to people with limbs that were missing, having limbs that were there. I can't imagine that. M witnesses to dead people being raised from the dead. They were witnesses to all these things. And we may look at that and we may say, wow, that would have been a great time to be alive. And you know what? It would have. But I will challenge you with this that we have a great time to be alive. 
Because at the time when Jesus was talking to the disciples here, the Holy Spirit did not have his present ministry that we have right now, where he permanently indwelled believers, where we can have God with us no matter where we are. These disciples followed Jesus around. Multitudes followed him around. People came to him from all over just to see him, just to touch his garments, to do whatever they could to, to listen to him, to hear him preach. But we, although we don't have the physical body of God incarnate here, we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit indwelling us that no matter where we go, we have God with us. What a blessing that is. A blessing that we can have part of the present kingdom. We could call this the spiritual kingdom if you want, but it's a kingdom nonetheless. We're the children. The children of the king are in his kingdom. Verse 38, uh, skipping back to that, it says, the field is the world and the, the good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. We, and also just one, one last one last thing about the time that we live in compared to the time that the disciples, hey, we're closer to that earthly kingdom. We are, we have, we're able to see so many more prophecies that, that are coming true. It's to see the word of God that is playing out in our world right here. Point number three, the kingdom grows. We have the growing kingdom. Still in Matthew chapter 13, look at verses 31 through 33. 31, verse 31 says, Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seed, of all seeds. But when it is grown, it is the greatest among herbs and becometh a tree, so that the birds of the air come and lodge in the branches thereof. Another parable spake he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like unto leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened. Well, as I started thinking about this and, and really meditating on this about what what does this mean? What does it mean to us? My first thought was that uh, the kingdom of God, starting out, the kingdom of heaven, starting out small, it has, there are, there are obviously um, spiritual aspects of that, that we are spiritual creatures. We're made to be spiritual creatures. And so this kingdom of heaven, people, people need to know they need that, that spiritual side fulfilled. There's only one way that it can be fulfilled. The only way is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the only way that that can happen. And we are wrong to actually think that we cannot have an impact on, on the rest of the world, on Davison, on Michigan, on the United States, and on the rest of the world. We are not right to limit God about the growth of his kingdom. He says it starts out small. It starts out as the grain of a mustard seed, just that little tiny seed. And then it expands and it grows. We should want to be part of that. We should be longing to be part of that and taking part in it. Uh, one other, th two other things about that. Um, a lot of people are searching for that fulfillment, that spiritual fulfillment, and they'll go all over the place to do it. Uh, as, as Brother Riley was, was speaking in uh, Sunday school a few weeks ago about uh, this mindfulness and meditation and yoga, the occult, all these things are, are things that will, are, will, will suck people in spiritually and will, will draw them away from the Lord as we focus more and more on ourselves. That's not what God has planned for us. But as I thought about this even more and about this kingdom of heaven being this little tiny grain of mustard seed or a little bit of leaven, a little bit of yeast that you would put into the bread and it spreads all the way through and makes the bread rise. It, it, this mustard seed that makes this great big plant. I thought about it, the kingdom of heaven in our own individual lives. How, how we hear the gospel. We realize that we're a sinner. We realize that we're lost in our own ways. But then we hear that Jesus died and paid the price for our sin on the cross. And we realize that we are in need of this Savior, and he offers us salvation freely as a gift. 
And then we accept, we receive Jesus Christ as our personal Savior. We become children of this kingdom. But then we need to grow. And that, that, that little, that start of, at our salvation should end up flourishing, should end up taking over every aspect of our life to the point of where that is what, where our treasure is. And that is where we should be striving to whatever, Lord, what can I do for you today? Let it not be about me, but let it be about you. How can I serve you today? Take over my whole life. I surrender all. That's where we need to be getting to, that growing kingdom. And then finally, our, our last, my last point is the kingdom is a treasure, the treasured kingdom. We need to look at how important this kingdom is in the words of Jesus in verse 44, where we started out the, the evening tonight. Verse 44 through 46 says, again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had, and bought it. Well, let's go back and let's just think about those verses. As we look in verse 44, uh, we, we see this, this man who had found a treasure. Now, I, I really do not believe that this man just stumbled upon this treasure. I believe if we're looking at along with the next part where the, the um, person who is seeking goodly pearls, the merchant man, I believe that this man was seeking this treasure. And when he had found this treasure, he realized that it was something so great that everything else in his life was just paled in comparison to that. This is how the kingdom of heaven should be for us. We need to be seeking our Lord. And as, as he reveals himself more and more to us, which he will, as we, we are seeking him, he will reveal himself. If you are sitting out there or listening online and you are saying, well, God just won't reveal himself to me. That's not true. God will reveal himself. He is faithful. Are you seeking him? Are you doing what you should be doing? Are you studying to show yourself approved unto God? This man who found this treasure, he hid it and for joy. of this whole thing. And the man that was the merchant man, he was seeking goodly pearls. This was what he's looking for. He's looking for these goodly pearls. And he probably, I'm guessing, I'm guessing that he would have found some, some goodly pearls. But when he found this one pearl, in verse 46, when, who, when he had found one pearl of great price, he realized that this pearl was so much better than anything that he could ever have, that he sold all that he had. He didn't just sell all of his pearls. I'm, I'm just taking this from what I see in the word of God right here. He sold, that, he sold everything that he had. And he went and he bought it because it was a treasure. Is the kingdom of heaven a treasure in your life? Is it a treasure in my life? Are we willing to say, I'll put everything else behind me for this kingdom of heaven because it's a treasure. You know, there are so many people who are searching for fulfillment in this life. I'm, I'm a teacher, uh, and I've been a teacher for, for several years. And, you know, I'm, I'm starting to see, and I've talked to my wife about this too, uh, more and more cases of, of people that are having very, very high anxiety. And, you know, I'm, there are people that, that struggle with that. And I, I understand, and I, I'm, I'm not putting that. I've, I've had some times where I've had high anxiety myself. But I'm seeing it on a rise, on a rise, over and over again. 
And you know, the Word of God says that we can have fulfillment in Him. That we are to cast all of our care upon Him. That we are to come unto Him, all who are weary and heavy laden, and He will give us rest. It's a treasure of the kingdom. Being a child of the kingdom. Things in our lives are not going to go great all the time. Hey, we got some, we got some troubles going on in this world. We got, we have, we have troubles with, with sicknesses. We have all these things, but we have a treasure. We have the kingdom. We have the kingdom of heaven. We have a coming kingdom where we are going to shine forth as the sun. There's a kingdom that's coming. We have a present kingdom as we live under our king here on this earth. We have a growing kingdom. We have a kingdom that, that uh, as our eyes are open more and more, we can appreciate more and more. And we have a treasure in the kingdom of heaven. God has given us a treasure. Jesus mentioned over and over and over again the kingdom of heaven. And I think I know that he had a purpose for it. And I probably only just skimmed the surface on the whole thing, but it gave me a blessing. Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, again, we thank you so much for the treasures that are in your word. We thank you for the treasure of the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord, that you allow us to be servants in your kingdom. You allow us to be children in your kingdom. You allow us to be heirs, joint heirs with Christ in your kingdom. What a blessing that is. What a great God you are. What a loving God you are. Thank you, Lord, that you have a plan for us. You have a plan for us for eternity. You have a plan for us here on this earth. And Lord, your desire is that we will grow in our relationship with you. Lord, thank you for the great love that you have for us. We can have joy because of the kingdom of heaven. Lord, I pray that you would do a mighty work in each of our lives. Help us to treasure this kingdom. Help us to put this above all the things that are on this earth. Lord, there are things that we love. There are things that we enjoy. Lord, not all these are bad things. Many, many good things you gave us to enjoy in this earth. But Lord, we want to have our mind and our hearts on the kingdom. Help us to do this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Brother. Thank you, brother. Wonderful message tonight. Folks, with heads bowed and eyes closed, as the piano begins to play, what a blessing to know that the kingdom of God is coming and we are going to be part of it. We see it being built even today. Lord willing, he's using us to be part in that. And as I listened to the message tonight, one thing that struck me that often maybe you have read many times and I too was the thought that Brother Dora brought out how the Word of God says that we in this kingdom to come are going to be bright shining lights and that's because of our relationship with Christ that as he said has nothing to do with us it's not of our goodness it's not of our righteousness it's of the righteousness of Christ it's about what he has done for us but as I thought about that tonight and thought how what a wonderful blessing it will be to be that bright shining light when that day comes boy we ought to be reminded tonight that we are to be a bright shining light today we are to be that light that shines so brightly for the Lord in our testimony for him in our walk for him in our ability to share the gospel as we then see others receive Christ, come to
to know him as their savior, and then they are added to the kingdom as well. So don't let that truth not fall on you tonight. Realize that truth tonight. And as we are going to reap in the blessing of being that light, when Jesus comes to establish his kingdom and rule and reign, that right now as we live, we have a responsibility to still be that light. We are the only light as children of God in a dark world. The only light in us is only because of Christ, just like our light when we're in the kingdom. It's not of us. It's of him and what he's done through us. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand tonight. I'm going to ask for a commitment. But I want you to really pray about that tonight. Contemplate that tonight. Maybe God gave you something else through this message as well that you're applying to your heart this evening. But I want to challenge you tonight. We are in such a time where the world needs Jesus Christ. We have Thanksgiving right around the corner. We have Christmas just a month away. Hearts are tender. There's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of unrest, as Brother Doro said. There's a lot of anxiety. And the answer to that is Jesus Christ. And they need to see that light. They need to see it in us. So I just want to challenge you tonight. Spend some time with the Lord. Commit yourself this evening saying, as just as I am going to shine brightly in this kingdom to come, God help me to shine brightly in the world that I live in right now. As I desire to spread the gospel, as I desire to speak of how good you are to others around me. I just challenge you with that tonight. I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope you've been encouraged by the message. I ask that you just spend some time and let God work in your life through what you heard tonight. I know I was blessed by it. I'm sure you were as well. Father, bless this invitation, we pray now in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor.